I'm over UFC, okay? If I want to see dudes grappling, I go to the, the gym twice a week. I see Hallelujah. it every day. Yes. And, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm over it. And then on top of that, it's like, now we have collision on Saturday night. Mm-hmm. So my Saturday nights are, somehow, I got to get through two hours of collision, and then, like, I better have watched SmackDown the night before, because I got to get through the two hours of collision, then I got to try and get through the entire UFC pay-per-view, before I do a show with Dave at, like, 1 o'clock in the morning, and it's like, I'm filled with such dread, but, like, when it's all over, I, I feel so much better, and I sleep, you know, for that five hours or whatever, like the dead. Ecstasies, in fact. I was, I was but no, the say. point is, I'm not looking forward to three hours of Raw. I hope whoever buys them goes, you know what? We're going to pay you more for less. Never been done in the history of television. But we decided we're like, you know, we're fans. We don't want to see all three hours of this. We'll see. I think what I've learned here today is either find a Molly dealer or get hit by lightning, and that will make your raw experience that much better. I like this guy. No dread when you get paid. So no one should ever complain Whoa. about any job ever. Is that right? Yeah, hold on now. Yeah, your, your job is, uh, you know, yeah. grave digging or whatever. That's not so bad. I get paid. Yeah. It's pros and cons to every job, especially after you're in the system for a while. Let me tell you. Okay. This guy on uh, YouTube chat says UFC is too much testosterone for Alvarez. Spoken by a person who's never been in a dojo in their life. Ooh. Too much testosterone. Ooh. Get out of here. Come on. Damn. Man. Actually, really, it's just that UFC is not compelling. I know that's the biggest thing with me. Boxing is one of my favorite sports. I grew up, I love boxing. Yeah, people are like, man, know? what a big show it was this weekend. No, it was supposed to be a big it's show. supposed to be a big but show. But then they lost the John Jones main yeah. event, and they had people paying $75,000 for tickets to the watch not event. a John Jones fight yeah. in Madison Square Garden. The, and that that was the main event, was the fact that it was in Madison Square Garden. But, you know. Yeah, the show had, had knockouts. The, it, it, was, it was like five easy fights to watch. Like, what can I say about a one minute knockout? How much more do you yeah. want me to say? Well, you want me to break it down second by second for 60 seconds and the guy got punched in the face and knocked out? What do you want me to say about it? Can't argue about scoring. They were all knockouts. Why don't you talk what to do your, you want me to say about this show? I think you, what you need to do is talk to your business partner and get you off of these Saturday shows. I wish. Unless, I begged. I it didn't matter. Uh, why? You, what, all of a sudden you have no control? And you also no Ryan went here? to the show. He wasn't going to be back in time anyway. Well, where was Garrett? Why are we wasting all this time? Ah, Let's talk about Wrestle Kingdom. We've got Sonata versus Naito. Hopefully oh, his eye's fixed. Time. Here we go. It's another one. He's got to get his eye fixed. Who? Because he was working on a bad eye for years. Naito? Naito. Mm. We got Okada versus Danielson by the grace of God. That's why he would do that thing with his eye. Did you know that? We got Will Ospreay against Moxley he had to hold it open. It and injured. Finley. That's why he did that whole thing. For the uh, United States slash United Kingdom slash whatever they're going to call this new belt. With the eye. Hiromu and El Desperado for the junior title. Clark Connors and Drilla Maloney versus TJP and Francesco Akira for the junior heavyweight tag title. Francesco. Francesco Akira. What did I say this time? I, it's some weird hybrid between that and Francesco. Well, listen, maybe if my grandmother wasn't named Francesca, this would be a lot easier. Francesca. No, she said Francesca. Francesca. She couldn't speak English, though, so it was a little confusing. Did Zack Sabre Jr. versus Hiroshi Tanahashi. For the world television title. And Shingo versus Tamatanga for the never open weight title. Yes. Did you watch the New Japan Strong Show by chance? I did not. I did not either. Great talking point. Show. Thanks, Mike. Great glorified house shows. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about movies. I was gonna lead that into a filthy Tom Lawler thing, but we can talk about movies. We have got MJF Emmanuel. as the executive producer. He's got that much money? Of the Iron Claw. Damn. The uh, the poster is a little confusing. He's he's listed on the poster, but the way the poster is put together, it looks like they're just listing him as one of the stars because he is. But he's actually an executive producer. Lance Von Eric was never a star. Go how with it, Ian, Mike. How much do they concentrate on uh, with him in this movie here? I don't know. I haven't seen the movie producer. yet. Executive producer. It means he's got money. He threw. I mean, the movie is about the Von Eric, so Lance Von Eric should be (laughs) all over the movie, right? They apparently didn't include Chris Von Eric. No, they didn't. They said due to timing issues. (laughs) Jeez. Oh, terrible. Yep. (laughs) Well, look, it's not like this guy does not have 
and entertainment background. It's not like he doesn't know what he's talking about when it comes to artistic things. I'm sure he's been in movies and productions before when it comes to blocking and all that sort of stuff. And the fact that I'm sure Chavo Guerrero Jr. was not the only one helping out on those wrestling sequences. Maybe it's a combined thing. Maybe he actually helped to finance this movie a little bit or threw in some money considering that this was not a big budget movie, you know, it's just not. And, and it's a, a much smaller film than, again, it's getting a whole lot of talk in our world, obviously, because of what it's about. But, you know, it's a relatively small budget, you know, a, a really small budget by Hollywood standards. So maybe he did help out that way. And he helped out also in an artistic way as well, where that's why he's got that EP credit. And we've got John Cena's Coyote versus Acme film. This is Justice. Friday, Warner Brothers stated they did not intend to release the film in favor of taking a $30 million tax write-off. Bastards. I wish I could get a $30 million tax write-off. Movies estimated to have cost 70 to $72 million to make. However, Puck News is reporting that Warner Brothers, isn't that like a hockey magazine, nice. will now allow the filmmakers to shop the movie to other potential distributors. Change, of course, reportedly occurred after, quote, some heated back and forth between, you don't say, between the studio and reps for the cast and crew. Can't imagine they'd be upset. As they well as hammered quote, them. online outcry by filmmakers and and this is the big one. Mm -hmm. The animation community. Mm. I'll bet they're outspoken. Don't want to piss them off. Amazon you got somebody Prime. talking bad about you. Can you imagine them drawing you bad too? Mm. Amazon Prime, Apple, and Netflix reportedly interested in acquiring the film from Warner Brothers. Good. Maybe WWE can buy and put it on Peacock. Well. Yes. I'd be fine with that. I'd be fine with anybody. Look, I, there's not, I don't see a whole lot of movies or anything like that, but I did like Looney Tunes cartoons and obviously the Coyote vs. the Roadrunner, one of the great stories that they would have, and John Cena being part of a live action part of this, some of the things that I've seen in hindsight now, once they said the movie was going to be canceled, a lot of the, again, people that worked on it that were pissed off released some of the, you know, some of the behind the scenes stuff and it looks awesome it looks like a fun movie that i would actually see so i'm happy somebody's going to be putting it out there and i'm happy for john cena as well too you know again this could be a you know again it's not like he's the rock when it comes to his movie roles it's not like he has those options this could might have been a big breakout thing for him so we'll see what is also interesting is that they note that Coyote vs. Acme is a live-action hybrid in the style of Who Framed Roger Rabbit or Space Jam. I believe two movies that, like the heyday of the Von Erics, all came before MJF was even born. That's true. That's true. Way to date us and everybody else out there that remembers that boss man. Thank you. On a Monday at that, when we have to watch Raw. Bringing us down. Bringing us down. No, How Bill Bird. Bring Actually, I don't know if Chris Adams is in it. Maybe he is. Oh, oh, come on, Brian. Come on. Chris Adams? I don't know what story they're going to tell. Mm. I don't know. I don't know nothing about the movie except the trailer I watched. I can't imagine what the Chris Adams would look like considering the guy they got to play Ric Flair. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. 
So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.